Good day, grade 10s. Welcome to this next lesson in mathematics. In this lesson, we're going to be going through exponents. The first thing I'm going to do is introduce to you or remind you about the exponent laws. And then we're going to go through several examples to make sure you remember them and understand them. And then we're going to move on to exponential expressions. OK, so before I carry on, I would just like to encourage you guys. I know that this is school break at the moment, but if you guys are watching this live, then please feel free to join us in the grade 10 uh, to enable class, mathematics class. That way you can not only take make use of all the facilities on the to enable platform but you can also message me which would be great and then what's nice about that is that you can give me an idea of the certain sections that you'd like to go through and then we can focus on those okay moving on to exponent laws so the laws are a to the m times a to the n is equal to a to the m plus n okay so let me give you an example of that if i said to you you've got two cubed times 2 squared. Do you agree that I could write this out as 2 times 2 times 2? That's the first one. And then you've got times 2 squared, which is 2 times 2, which becomes what? It's 2 to the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 2 to the 5, right? And what did I do? That is the same as going 3 plus 2. Therefore, you can say any, if it's got the same basis, if you're multiplying it, you can add the exponents. Okay, just for the record, in case you guys didn't know this, I kind of just put this here out of interest because I forget all reference, but just in case you don't know this, the letter at the bottom or the number at the bottom is called the base, and the number or letter at the top or to the power of is called the exponent or the index. So some textbooks will call this, instead of calling this exponents, they'll call this indices and they'll say that you're doing your indices section. Why? Because the singular for indices is index. So another name for this letter at the top or this number at the top is instead of exponent is an index. So either you will be written, your textbook will say exponents or indices. And it totally depends on who wrote your textbook and who told your teacher as to which they say, but it's the same thing. Okay, let's look at the next law. The next law says it's the opposite of the times. This is if you've got a to the m divided by a to the n, you can subtract the exponents. So let's again have a look at that. Let's say we've got 2 to the 5 divided by 2 cubed. Do you agree that I could write that as 1, 2, 3, 4, 5? Because that's what that means. It means 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, 5 times all over 2 times 2 times 2, we're dividing it. And now, do you agree that I can cancel? But when we're canceling, what are we really doing? We're dividing, okay? So I can go 2 divided by 2 is 1, 2 divided by 2 is 1, 2 divided by 2 is 1, and what have I left? I'm left with 2 times 2, which is the same as 2 squared. But do you agree that I wrote this as 2 to the 5 minus 3, 2 to the 5 minus 3, that would also be 2 squared. So therefore, I've just shown you that that rule applies, okay? So the, this is called the division law, where if you've got the same base and you're dividing your, your, your bases, then you subtract the exponents. Okay, now we've got AB to the power of N is equal to A to the N, B to the N. Okay, so let me just change color. So what are we saying? We are saying that this is the same as, let's say it's 2 times 3 all to the power of 3. Okay, so do you agree that would be the same as saying 2 times 3 times 2 times 3 times 2 times 3? That's what we're really saying when we say two, everything in the bracket Okay, cubed. We're saying 2 times 3 cubed is 2 times 3 times 2 times 3 times 2 times 3. But do you agree that because this is times, we know with times it doesn't matter if you go 1 times 2 times 3. 1 times 2 is 2 times 3 is 6. Or you could go 3 times 1 times 2. 3 times 1 is 3 times 2 is 6. So it doesn't matter which order we write these. So we can rewrite these in any order. So we can go 2 times 2, times 2, times 3, times 3, times 3, right? We're writing out these two. 
these three twos, okay, and these three threes. So do you agree that could be written, this bit here could be written as two cubed, because there are three of them, multiplied by three cubed, because there are three of them, which is exactly the same as saying two cubed times three cubed. So there you go, I've just proven that. If you've got a b to the power of n, then you must multiply that into everything inside the brackets. Okay, so that n applies to everything inside the brackets. And there's the proof. Okay, I'm going to raise all the writing so we've got space. And now we're going to do this one. So again, this is just the inverse of this law here. We're saying a over b all to the power of n is equal to a to the n over b to the n. Okay, so let's try this. Let's go um, again, let's make it 5 over 3 all to the power of 3. Then do you agree that would be the same as 5 over 3 times 5 over 3 times 5 over 3 times, oopsie, that's it. Okay, <laughs> which can be rewritten as 5 times 5 times 5 all over 3 times 3 times 3 which could be written as 5 cubed 5 times 5 times 5 is 5 cubed all over 3 cubed 3 times 3 times 3 ta-da so we've just proven that we can take that 3 and apply it to everything inside the bracket okay it doesn't matter if this is division or multiplication the power the thing to the the bracket, whatever power the bracket is to, applies to everything inside the bracket. Okay, now let's look at this final rule, this one here, which says a to the m to the n is equal to a to the mn. Okay, so let's try this. Let's say we've got two cubed all to the power of 5. Okay, do you agree that that would mean that it's 2 cubed times 2 cubed times 2 cubed times 2 cubed times 2 cubed that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, right? But we know from the first law, okay, that this can be rewritten as 3, 6, 9, 12, 15. We can add them. Okay, using that law there. Therefore, we can say that 2 to the 3 to the 5 is equal to 2 to the 15. So what are we doing? We have multiplied across the bracket and there's that what we did. Okay, now obviously, obviously this will only work if a is greater than 0 because you can't divide by a. If b is greater than 0 because you cannot divide by b. And if m and n are elements of real numbers, as soon as they're not um, members of real numbers, then it becomes irrational and it doesn't work, okay? So those are obviously the rules. Okay, so now that we've got that, let's apply our rules, okay? So the first thing I'm going to do, I'm actually going to do it a little bit slowly to show you how you'd multiply it out if you didn't know the rules. Okay, or actually no, not this one, but this one we will. But do you agree this is 2 to the 3x times 2 to the 4x? Okay, we could do this as this 2 to the 3x is 2 to the x times 2 to the x times 2 to the x, because there are three of them, times 2 to the x times 2 to the x times 2 to the x times 2 to the x, because there are four of them. So that four there belongs to those four. And these three here belong to these three. So what are we left with? We're left with 2 to the 7x. Or we could have just added them. We could have gone 2 to the 3x plus 4x is equal to 2 to the 7x. And that's actually how you would do it normally. Similarly here, if you've got 3y squared, that is 3y times 3y, which is 3 times 3 is 9, and y times y is y squared. But using our rules, we would know it's 3y all squared means that this 2 applies to everything inside the bracket. So it becomes 3 squared times y squared, which is just 9y squared. Ta da! Okay, now, one of the rules that I haven't included in the previous um, laws yet was that anything to the 0 equals 1. Anything to the 0 
equals one. So let me just prove that to you and I'm going to write it over, oops, sorry, I'm going to write it over here. I'm just going to delete this writing. Okay, so anything to the zero equals one. Let's say, for example, we've got a to the naught. That is going to equal one, right? And let me prove it to you. If, a, for example, we've got, we know that this dude here is a subtraction, okay? So we've got a to the m over a to the n is equal to a to the m minus n. But let's pretend, let's let m equal n. Do you agree then you've got a to the m over a to the m, they're the same thing, which is a to the m minus m, which is a to the naught. But what's a to the m divided by a to the m? We know it equals one because we're saying one thing divided by exactly the same thing is one. So therefore, we've just proven that a to the naught is equal to one. Anything to zero equals one. So now we can do this example here, where we say, and I'm just going to change color so you can see what I'm doing. So we've got six z to the zero times by seven x all to the zero. Okay, so now you need to be careful because over here, the zero only belongs to Z. So this is the same as saying six times one times by the whole of this is to the power of zero, which means it's to the power of one. So the answer is six. Hmm, not too bad, hey? Let's do a couple more. Okay, so we've got 18x cubed y squared over 6x squared y. Right, so the first thing you do when you simplify these is to look for common factors and you always start with your numbers. So what number can go both into 18 and 6? Well, let's think about this. 18 can be rewritten as 3 times 6. Okay, then there's x cubed y squared all over 6x squared y. So do you agree that cancels with that and you're left with 3x cubed y squared all over x squared y. So now if we rewrite it according to our laws, this means 3x cubed minus x squared. I'm sorry. Um, let me just erase that bit there. Erased everything. Let's try again. So we know that that's going to be 18x cubed y squared over 6x squared y, which can be written as 3 times 6x cubed y squared all over 6x squared y. So they cancel. And that means you're left with 3x cubed y squared all over x squared y. Okay, so three we're going to leave here, but do you agree this? If we do the math, it becomes three, then it becomes x cubed minus squared times our y squared minus one, because there's implied one year. So do you agree that becomes three? x squared minus two is, I mean, x cubed minus two is just x, and y to two minus one is going to be just y. So the final answer is three xy. Okay, let's do this one. Okay, so again, we're just using our rules and we say the rule is that 2 to the a to the b is equal to 2ab. We need to multiply across the, I mean, the brackets. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to multiply this with everything in this bracket. So it becomes 2 to the minus 2 times by 2z plus minus two times minus one. So what have I done there? I've been very careful in multiplying out. And when I did that, I allowed this minus two to be independent. So I'm saying, okay, fine, it is two to the minus two, but we're multiplying it by minus one. So therefore we need to include that minus one and we need to put a plus between them because of the fact that we don't know if this is gonna end up as positive or negative when we write it down. So this becomes 2 to the minus 2 times by 2 is minus 4z, then plus, sorry, plus, minus 2 times minus 2 is a plus 2, 
Okay, so do you agree that it can be written as 2 to the negative 4z times by 2 squared, which can be written as 4, 2 squared is 4, okay, and then it's over 2 to the 4z, okay, and that's it, that's the answer, there's nothing else we can do. Hmm, okay, that's quite interesting. Right, now we're talking about exponential expressions. Now, the things that we've been doing, the substituting in and, I mean, the simplifying and everything else, are really called exponential expressions. But now, because they're getting slightly more complicated and because you need to factorize the numbers, they suddenly are defined officially as exponential expressions. And if, what we're going to be doing is using a thing which is called basically you're going to be using prime factorization prime factorization where we are going to look for the prime numbers of each number every base okay and see if we can break down these fractions to even easier fractions to cancel so let's have a look so this do you agree is equal to 2 to the 2x there's nothing mysterious about that but do you agree 4 could be written as 2 squared this 4 can be written as 2 squared to the power of 2, all over 16. Now, we want prime factorization. Do you agree that 4 has been broken down into 2s and 4s have been broken down into 2s? Chances are we're going to have to break this up into 2s. Okay, so let's see, we've got 16. If we divide that by 2, we get 8. If we divide that by 2, we get 4. If we divide that by 2, we get 2, and if we divide that by 2, we get 1. So those two are a pair, and those two are a pair, so 2 times 2 is 4. So therefore, we can write this as 4, sorry, um, as 2 to the 4x. Okay, do you understand what I'm saying? I'm saying 2 times 2 is 4, 2 times 2 is 4. So two of them are going to give me, so in other words, it's either going to be 4 2x, 4 to the 2x, or 2 to the 4x. And we're going with this because all the bases are then 2. Right, so now let's get rid of these brackets and then we can play. So we've got 2 to the 2x times 2 squared times 2 to the 4 all over 2 to the 4x. So now what do we know about our bases and division? We know that if we've got bases that are the same when we're taking our exponents we can subtract them if we're dividing overall so this becomes 2 to the 2x plus 2 plus 4 minus 4x okay so that becomes 2 to the 2x minus 4x is minus 2x plus 2 plus 4 is plus 6 and then to make it look pretty we write that as 2 to the 6 2 to the negative 2x, which can be finally written as 2 to the 6 over 2 to the 2x. And there we go. Now, normally they ask you to simplify these and they will say leave it in positive exponents. So you need to change that 2 to the negative 2x and bring it down. You can't just leave it up there. Okay, let's do another example. So we've got 9x minus to the x minus 1, 5 to the x minus 2, over 15 to the x minus 3. Hmm, so let's see. 5 is a prime number, so we obviously can't factorize that. 9, however, can be written as 3 squared. So do you agree we could write that as 3 squared all to the power of x minus 1 times our 5 to the x minus 2 and then 15 is interesting again because 15 you can write as 5 times 3 and that's quite sneaky because this has a base of 3 and this is a base of 5 so this year is going to break up into two numbers that have the same type of bases so we end up with 5 times 3 all to the power of x minus 1 so then let's simplify this. It becomes 3 to 2x minus 2 times 5 to x minus 2 all over. Now remember this belongs to everything in the bracket. So it becomes 5 to the x minus 1 times 3 to the x minus 1. Okay, so now what do we need to do? Now we need to group the 
common bases and add the exponents. So do you agree that's a three and that's a three? So we're going to go three. So two x minus two minus bracket x minus one multiplied by five and this is what's on being brought down x minus two but then this is a minus because it is being divided so it's minus x minus one and that's the important rule here that when you are subtracting substances that are on the lower half of the fraction that was we dividing then what do you do you subtract your exponents okay so then let's make this pretty it becomes three to two x minus two minus times a plus is a minus x minus times a minus is a plus one times five to the x minus two minus x plus one please remember that it was here plus one as well please remember to be careful of that okay so what do we get we get three the two x minus x is just x minus two plus one is minus one times by five to the x minus x goes away minus two plus one is minus one so then let's see what we get we got three to the x 1 over 3 times 1 over 5, which is 1 over 15. And then there's a 3 to the x times by 3 to the x. But of course, we don't have to write the 1, so you can erase it. And there you go. There's your answer. 3 to the power of x divided by 15. And no, whoopsie, sorry. You cannot substitute, divide this by 3 and go, oh, well, it's 1 to the x of over five because this has got it's paired x is to the power of x so three to the power of x divided by 15 is the simplified version of this sum yeah okay let's do another example i just need to get a pen okay aha uh -huh. now we've got nine to two and minus one three to three and plus one three to n minus three and three so I'm really hoping straight away you can go, well, it's pretty obvious that 9 is 3 times 3, okay? Or we could write it as 3 squared. And then we can simplify this at all the bases are 3. We're going to go, right, well, this is 3 squared, all to the power of 2n minus 1, all over 3 to 3n plus 1, times by 3 to the n minus 3 times by 3. Right, so the first thing we're going to do is make this pretty over here by multiplying across the brackets. So it becomes 3 to the 4n minus 2. And then while we add it, we might as well add up the nice like terms. So we've got 3n plus n is 4n, so it's 3 to the 4n times by 3 to the 1 minus 3 is minus 2. Hmm, that's interesting. Let me rewrite that the way it should be, or the way it would be if it's represented above. Okay. Do you agree that we've got 3n plus n gives me 4n, right? Plus 1 minus 3 gives me minus 2 times by 3. So that's beautiful because then these cancel and you're left with 1 over 3. Huh, quite a nice question that. So remember to always look for your factors that are going to make things a little bit easier, like your 9 and your 3. Right, now let's have a look at this. We've got 6, 2, 4, and 3. So initially this might look a little bit weird because you've got a 4 here. And you might think, hmm, well, 6, 2, 4, and 3 goes into 12. So maybe I need to be looking at 12 as my basic base. And no, because do you agree that 6 can break up into 2 times 3. 4 can break up into 2 times 2. There's a 2 and there's a 3. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to make these all bases that are prime numbers that can go, in other words, the smallest base that we can possibly make this to make it still the same thing. So it's going to be 2 times 3 all to the power of x minus 2, 2 to the x plus 2, all over this here is 2 times 2 which is 2 times 2 to the power of x times 3 to the power of x minus 4. 
Okay, now let's get rid of the brackets. Remember what it says, the rule is a to the m to the n is equal to a to the m n. We need to multiply this with everything inside the bracket. Okay, so it becomes 2 to the x minus 2, 3 to the x minus 2, 2 to the x plus 2, all over everything inside the bracket to the power of x becomes 2 to the x, 2 to the x, 3 to the x minus 4. Hmm. Right, so now we could cancel, but the safer and better way to do this and the way that I want to teach you is what we've been doing all along, just that this is like a more complicated version. We're going to take a common base of 2 and we're going to write, what does it say? It says x plus x, which is 2x, minus x times x times x, so that becomes 3x. Okay, that's a 3. Let me just erase that and make sure you can see that that's a 3. So that there is a 3. Okay, so we've done the, oopsie, we've done the 2s. Okay, let me just check that. 2x, x. Okay, x and x is 2x and x, oopsie. Um, hang on a minute, I've made a mistake. I don't know what I was thinking. Let me just erase this and try again, shall we? Don't know what I was thinking. Okay, so we got 2. X plus X. Okay, X plus X. Okay, and you know what I'm going to do? I'm, a little bit too, I'm doing it a little bit slow. I'm just going to do the top lot. So I'm going to go minus 2 plus 2. So I'm going to go minus 2 plus 2. Then we've got 3 to the X minus 2. Taking it a little bit slow just to make sure we get this right. Then we've got 2 to the x plus x is 2x. And then 3 to the x minus 4. Doesn't that look prettier? Okay, so now we can make things look even nicer. I'm going to change color so you can see what I'm writing because I'm going to be writing on the right hand side here. So x plus x gives me 2x, right? So it's 2 to the 2x. I don't know where I was thinking to start. Minus 2 plus 2 goes away. Whee! So what are you left with? You're left with 3 to the x minus 2 all over 2 to the 2x, 3 to the x minus 4. Okay, so they cancel. Woohoo! Okay, life is good. Now we need to play with this, okay? So we've got 3 to the x minus 2 minus, remember this is division, so therefore you subtract x minus 4, and you always put your brackets in, otherwise you're going to mess up your minuses. So it becomes 3 to the x minus 2 minus times the plus is a minus x, minus times the minus is a plus 4. So it becomes 3 to the x minus x, they go away, and you've got minus 2 plus 4 is just 2, which is 9. Okay, sorry, I don't know what my brain was thinking just now when I made that silly mistake, but there you go. Right, now let's do another one. Okay, so we've got 3 to the a minus 3 to the a minus 1, 3 to the a plus 2 minus 3 to the a plus 1. Okay, so this isn't quite the same as the previous one. Do you see the previous one? Yeah, we had times. -es. This is a times and this is a times. And that's why we could just add the exponents. Do you notice with this one, we've got a minus, yeah, and we've got a minus, yeah. So we can't just go, well, this is this is not, not equal to 3 to the a times 3 to the a to the minus 1, which is 3 to the 2a minus 1. That's not what that equals because this is a minus sign, not a multiplication. So I'm going to rewrite these, but I'm going to separate them out so that they have the same look. So in other words, I'm going to go 3 to the a, 3 to the a minus 1 is, can also be written as 3 to the a times 3 to the negative 1, okay, all over. Similarly, yeah, we can write this as 3 to the a times 3 squared minus 3 to the a times 3. So do you see that, yeah, we've got a 3 to the a, yeah, we've got a 3 to the a, yeah, we've got a 3 to the a, yeah, we've got a 3 to the a. So we can actually take out a common factor of 3 to the a at the top and 3 to the a at the bottom. So we can say, right, the top is going to be 3 to the a. What are we left with? We're left with 1 minus 3 to negative 1. Okay, I'm taking out a common factor of 3 to the a, and you're left with 1 minus 3 to the 1. All over, yeah, I'm going to take out another common factor of 3 to the a. And what are we left with? We're left with 3 squared minus 3. 
So we cancel these, right? Because 3a divided by 3a is just one. Now this looks a little bit scary, but we can take it nice and slowly. We're gonna do it in baby steps. I like saying baby steps. So it becomes one minus one third, all divided by three squared minus three. Okay, that's what's happening here. So I'm gonna change color so you can see what I'm doing because I'm gonna be writing up here on the side. The common denominator for this is three, right? Common denominator is three. And remember there's an implied one year. So we can say one goes into three, three times. Three times one is three minus one. And that's all divided by three squared, which is what? What's three squared? Three squared is nine minus three. Okay, so three minus one is two over three divided by nine minus three, which is six. So do you agree I could write that as two over three times by one over six? Because what do you do? That's divided by one, right? And we're gonna tip in times. So it's gonna be two over three times six, which is 18. Ta-da, there's your answer. Okay then, right. Can we simplify that a bit more? Actually we can, hey, because two is an even number and 18 is an even number, which means that two is divisible into 18. So do you agree that becomes one over nine? Okay, two is divisible into 18, so it becomes one divided by nine, and that's your final answer. Right, now this, okay. So, if you've been following these lessons, you'll know that what have we done? We've done, before we did this, we did some factorization. Okay, and there was a reason we did the factorization is because we needed factorization to be able to simplify these exponent expressions. Now, factorization isn't new to you guys. You did it last year. You did common factors, which you've gone through. You did the difference of two squares. Okay, we've done trinomials. And what was there? There was a grouping. Okay. And the reason I mentioned this is because if you look at this, yeah, we've got 9x minus 1, and then we've got 3x, 3 to the x plus 1. And if you look at it straight away, you think, oh, well, there's nothing. Yeah, they're being silly. And then you look at the mark allocation, and you see it's like with four marks. And you go, hang on. There's obviously some issue here. There's something I'm missing. And the thing that you're missing is that we need to change this nine into its prime factors. Okay, so in other words, what can we factorize nine in? We can factorize nine to become three times three, which can also be written as three squared. So do you agree that I could write this as three squared to the X minus one all over three to the X plus one. Okay, but what do we know about indices or exponents across the brackets? We have to multiply them. So it becomes 3 to the 2x minus 1 all over 3 to the x plus 1. And now this is special because this is the sum and difference of two squares because 2x, this could be rewritten. I could write 3 to this is 3 to the x all squared, right? I can rewrite that. In fact, let's do that. Becomes 3 to the x all squared minus 1 all over 3 to the x plus 1. So now the first term is squared, the second term is squared, and there's a minus sign. So we're looking at sum and difference of two squares. So I can write that as 3 to the x minus 1, because the square root of something squared is just that number times by 3 to the x plus 1, all over 3 to the x plus 1. These then cancel, and my final answer is just 3 to the x, oopsie, minus 1. There we go. That's a nice question. I like that question. Okay. Ha ha. Let's look at this. We've got 2 to the t minus 2 to the t minus 2 times by 3, I mean divided by 3 times by 2 to the t minus 2 to the t. Okay, so from the last question we were given, we can see that we should be starting to think about factorizing again because now we've got that minus sign between them, okay? 
But this, do you agree there's a 2 to the t here and a 2 to the t there? So we could say, well, this is 2 to the t minus 2 to the t minus 2. All over, we can take out a common factor of 2 to the t. And what are we left with? We're left with 3 minus 1. Because 2 to the t divided by 2 to the t is equal to 1. Okay, so then I could rewrite this. And I could realize that this can be written as 2 to the t minus 2 to the t times 2 to the minus 2. Okay, that's what that means. It means that it's to the power of negative 2. All over 2 to the t. 3 minus 1 is 2. Okay. So now do you see I can take out a common factor of 2 to the t? So you take out 2 to the t. And you're left with 1 minus 2 to the negative 2 all over 2 to the t times by 2. So we can cancel those. It's starting to look nice. And then again, I'm going to just change colors so you can see where I'm writing. And I'm changing it to green. So this can be... Do you agree that's the same as 1 minus 1 over 2 squared, okay, divided by 2? I'm just writing it like this so that we can play with it a little bit more. Okay, so then what? We've got a common denominator of 2 squared. But what is 2 squared? Do you agree that 2 squared is 4? And there's an implied 1 here. So we've got 1 goes into 4 4 times. 4 times 1 is 4 minus 4. 4 divided into 4 is 1, so 1 times 1 is 1, divided by 2. But what do you do when you divide? You tip and times, you tip and times, so we times 1 over 2. So you get 4 minus 1 is 3 over 4 times 1 over 2, which can be written as 3 over 8. Ta-da! Because you can't simplify that any further. Yay! Okay, another one. Okay. So again, you've got to think about factorization because if you look at this, there's nothing obvious that can be cancelled. There's 4x minus 12b and there's 16x minus 144b. And you're thinking, well, there's nothing much I can do here. I could maybe take out a 2 at the top and a 2 at the bottom, but that's really not going to help me. But if I realize that, where's this pen? There we go. 16 can be written as 4 squared, and 144 can be written as 12 squared, then do you agree that I could write this as 4 and squared times by x minus 12 squared times by b, b, all over 4 to the x minus 12b? Hmm. So now you need to start thinking about some difference of two squares because remember that if something is squared, so we've got a squared minus b squared, what does it become? It becomes a minus b, a plus b. So if I do that here and I realize that 2x is the same as squared and 2b is the same as squared there, then you end up with 4 minus 12 to a power of x and b, okay? Then you've got 4x pl plus, oh, I'm sorry, let's try again, Green. 4x plus 12 to the b, all over 4x minus 12b. And how pretty is it that that cancels with that? So you're left with 4 to the x plus 12 to the b. Ta-da! Finish that. Hmm. So what are you looking for? Again, even though we are told to simplify the exponential expressions, you're going to always look for your common factors first. You're always going to look for factorization. So you're going to look for common factors. You look for we could have taken out a common factor of 2, but then it would have been a horrible question to try and solve, so I'm glad we didn't. You can, must look for some indifference of two squares, look for trinomials, and then in the final measure, you look for grouping. Right, let's look at this one. You've got 5 to the 2y minus 3 times, please note, times 2 to the 4y plus 4, 10 to the power of minus 5y plus 5. Right, now let's look at this. 
Do you agree that that's not a perfect square? Okay, five is not a perfect square, two is not a perfect square, 10 is not a perfect square. So that's not going to work. Hmm. Do you also agree that five times two makes 10? So I can actually split up the bottom layer to make 10 units. Okay, to make five times two is 10. So I'm gonna split it up into five times two, right? So in other words, what I'm saying is, the bottom is gonna be five times two, because five times two is 10, all to the power of minus five y plus five, right? Right? This is still five to the two y minus three, multiplied by two to the four y plus four. That's still the same. Okay, so then what do I do? I can apply, remember the rule, a, B, all to the M is equal to A to the M, B to the M. Okay, so that's what we're doing. We're applying that rule to the bottom. So we're going to go 5 to the 2Y minus 3, 2 to the 4Y plus 4, all over 5 to the minus 5Y plus 5, 2 to the minus 5Y plus 5. Okay, so now we've used that rule there. Now we can have to look at the things that we've got that are common bases, common bases. So I'm going to look, wait, let's just change color. I'm going to look at this dude here because he's got a common base of 5, right? So it becomes 5 to the 2y minus 3 minus, remember this is division because the rule is a to the m over a to the n is equal to a to the m minus n. So when you are dividing, you subtract your exponent. So we're subtracting it minus, and this becomes minus 5y plus 5 multiplied by, and again, I'm going to change color now to purple, this lot here, which is 2 to the 4y plus 4 minus minus 5y plus 5. And why am I subtracting? Because we're dividing. Remember that when we subtract, dividing, we subtract, okay? So let's go back here and let's go back to red. So we've got 5 to the 2y minus 3 minus times a minus is a plus 5y minus times the plus is a minus 5. So I might as well just finish it here. It becomes 5 to 2y plus 5y is 7y. Minus 3 minus 5 is minus 8. Multiplied by, let's change color, 2 to the 4y plus 4 minus times minus is a plus 5y. Minus times a plus is a minus 5. So we multiply it, 2 to the, might as well add them up, 4y plus 5y is 9y, plus 4 minus 5 is minus 1. Okay, and that's as far as we're going to go for today, grade 10s. I really think you need to practice these. These are quite technically advanced, and on top of that, you need to know your your exponent laws and your factorization laws. So what I would suggest you do grade 12s, I mean grade 10s, is you go through this video again, watch the video nice and slowly, and then at the beginning of each question, pause the video and try the question by yourself. Okay, and once you've done that, then you can carry on. Have a great day.